Now, just before we go on to the next question, don't worry, that question will be coming. Um, I thought that I'd use this question that I've just done um, to show you some set notation that you may see on a question that you might be answering. So let's have a look. It's the same question with the even numbers in A and B, which is given by a data set, which you've just done. This question, it says, find P bracket A. Now, that P means probability, and inside the bracket is the probability that you're looking for. So you're looking for the probability of event A. What is event A? Just remind yourself, event A, A is all the even numbers, 2, 6, 8, 12, 14, 18, which is inside this circle A, okay? So we want to know what the probability of selecting A or choosing A would be, or a number that is in A would be. So, Let's look inside that circle. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six numbers inside the circle A. So we can say six out of the total amount in our data set, which is six in here, seven, eight, nine. So it's gonna be six out of nine, the probability of selecting A. And you can divide this probability further if you want to. So six divided by uh, three, both of them go into three, or three goes into both of them rather. Um, so six divided by three is two, and nine divided by three is three, so you could leave your answer as two over three as well. Right, now what does this mean? Probability of A with this dash on the top. That means that it's not A. So we want to know the probability of A not happening, the event A not happening, which is basically, if this is event A, the probability of event A not happening is going to be one minus that, because all probabilities are out of one, okay? So you could do, one minus the probability of A happening, okay, we know the probability of A happening is uh, six over nine, so it'd be one minus six over nine, which is basically going to be three over nine. Again, that can be simplified further, so divide both sides by three, you get one over three. And you'll notice here, if you look at the simplified version, two over three is the probability of A happening, and therefore the probability of A not happening is whatever is left out of three, the whole, which is one out of three. Another way you could see the probability of A not happening is if you look at the circle A here, okay? So everything inside this circle is A, so therefore everything outside this circle is not A. So let's see what's outside this circle. We've got that number, that number, and that number, which are not inside circle A. So therefore one, two, three out of nine, which is the total number. Why don't you at home try to work out the probability of B and the probability of not B happening? When you're ready, press play again and then we'll go through the answers. Okay, so the probability of B happening. So again, circle B, what does it contain? It contains one, two, three, four numbers. So therefore four out of the total, which is nine. So four over nine um, is our answer. So the answer four over nine, you can leave it like that or you could try to um, simplify it if it allows you, but you can see that four and nine do not have any common factor, so you can't cancel down and simplify further. All right, what did you get for not B? Um, if you didn't do one minus that, then you could look at um, the circle B and look at all the numbers that are not B. So that, 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 and that are not inside the circle B. So one, two, three, four, five out of nine. Um, but if you did use one minus, you could do one minus the probability of B happening. So therefore one minus B happening was four over nine. So that would be one minus that, and that would be five over nine as well. Now these last two, um, they introduce to you a special symbol, which is this you have here as a U, um, they call it the union, and then you have this, which is an intersection. And they have a specific mathematical symbols associated with them. This, which we call or, and this which we call and, or is associated with being a plus to add. So the probability of event A plus the probability of event B. Whereas intersection here, which is and, is associated with multiplication. So it means to find the probability of A and B happening, and you will be uh, multiplying. Let's do this. This is asking us for the probability of event A or the probability of event B happening. Remember, it means or. So, where is event A and event B happening? It's happening inside these two circles. So how many 
pieces of data do we have inside here? So it's that, 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 and that. That's event A or B. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we have eight out of the total, which is nine. So the probability of event A or event B happening is eight out of nine. So therefore, if I had to ask, what's the probability of event A or event B not happening? It's gonna be one minus that, which is one over nine. Right, moving on to this one, probability of event A and B happening. When does event A and B happen at the same time? You know, it's this part of the intersection that represents probability of event A and B happening. These two numbers, so two out of nine, these two numbers represent when A and B are happening. Okay, so two out of nine is our probability for A and B. Um, I found that with Venn diagram questions, they are starting to move away from the set notation and sort of ask you the questions um, in sentences. So they'll ask you, what's the probability of event A and B happening, rather than giving you the symbol. But just in case they do turn up, uh, you're not stunned and you know surprised by um, what the symbols represent and you are prepared. Hopefully you've understood that. We'll, we'll look at the harder examples for Venn diagram in the following questions. Now in this part of the lesson, we will look at exclusively two questions that are specifically for the higher paper. So the question I have behind me is probably gonna range at grade six, maybe grade seven. Um, we are given a Venn diagram which is filled in with algebra. And it says to us, given that um, our data set contains 40 elements, find the value of x part a, and b, an element is chosen randomly, find the probability of a and b. Right, so what are we told? We are told for part a that this plus this plus this plus this is equal to 40. So if we write that down as an algebra equation, an algebraic equation, so x plus four plus three x plus two x plus three, plus nine, that equals to 40. So that's x plus four, plus three x, plus two x plus three, plus nine is equal to 40. If we collect the like terms, solve this equation, we will find our value for x. So let's start off by simplifying. So we have x plus three x, four x, four x plus two x is six x. So we have six x and the numbers we have four plus three, which is seven, seven plus nine, 16. So plus 16 equals 40. And we can take the 16 to the other side. So 40 minus 16, we're left with six x here, and we're left with 24 there. And then we divide by six, so x is equal to 24 divided by six, and 24 divided by six is four. So x is equal to four. Now that we have found the value of x, in order to answer the second part of the question, we can either do one or two things. We can either substitute the x value in here for all of these, so we end up with numbers rather than algebraic expressions for our Venn diagram partitions, or we can just find what a and b is and then substitute that value in there, okay? It might actually be a good practice for you um, to just substitute that in because, you know, in an exam, you may have several parts of this question. So let's just sub it in. So if this is x plus four, this x plus four can now represent four plus four, which is going to be eight. Um, this three x is going to be three times four, which is 12. This two x plus three is gonna be two times four, which is eight, eight plus three, which is 11. So now you have eight, 12, 11, and nine to deal with. You can even delete the others just so that they're not in your way anymore because you've, oops, wrong one. I'll get back and write this back again, 12. And just do it by hand. There we go. So we've got 8, 12, 11, and 9. Now, what are we asked for here? We asked for the probability of A and B. A and B is this intersection because this part of the um, Venn diagram is representing the intersection of A and B. So therefore, it's going to be 12 out of the total amount. So we have to add up all of this to find the total amount. But we were told, remember earlier on, it's 40, so it saves us time just to use that rather than add this up. So 12 over 40, and once again, leave the answer as 12 over 40, or you can choose to simplify. Now, I am going to add a part C to the question that we've just done. And part C tells us that an element from set B is selected randomly. 
what is the probability that it also belongs to A? So, we are told that something, an element, is selected from B. Now, how much data or how many elements are inside B? B has 12 plus 11. So, if you add 12 plus 11, you get 23. So, B has a total of 23 pieces of data or elements. So, what's the probability that it also belongs to A? This 12 is a part of the Venn diagram that also belongs to A. So, this 12 is the intersection of A and B, right? So, 12 out of 23 is our answer. Now, if you're wondering, how comes we have a different denominator this time? Last time, the data was from the whole data set, which was 40. But this time, we, our, our data set is narrowed down. When it says a question, it's telling us that set B is selected randomly. That means only from within set B. We can only choose from within set B. Likewise, if it said to us, set A, given that set a, a, a data piece is selected from set A, then it will only be out of 20, because in set A, there are only 20 pieces of data. So this is the reason that we have a different denominator this time, because we are told that the data is only from set B. In the next question, we'll explore a question like this, and you can try this one yourselves. Okay, so on to our last question. We will be now testing our understanding of the given probability. So here we have uh, a Venn diagram that represents percentages of PS5 and Xbox owners. And we are told, given that a student owns an Xbox, what is the probability that they also own a PS5? So, what are we looking at? If you look at our Venn diagram, uh, we got 26, 33, 21, 20. So let's just quickly go through it. That 33 represents the owners of PS5 and Xbox. This 20 represents people who don't own either X PS5 or Xbox. They may have another games console or they may be wise and maybe not play games at all. They may be concentrating on their studies. I don't know. <laughs> um, by the way, I play games, so don't worry. I'm a gamer. Um, I'm not condemning anyone who does any gaming. Um, so 26 here represents uh, people who just have a PlayStation 5 and the addition of those 26 and 33 will represent the people that have a PlayStation 5. Um, and again, the 33 and tw uh, 21 here would represent the people that have an Xbox. So back to the question, uh, we are told, given a student owns an Xbox. So that means it's only gonna be out of this circle. So the total of this circle is 54. If you add these two up, you get 54. So our denominator of our probability would be 54. What about this? Well, what is the probability that they also own a PS5? Well, the PS5 owners are the 33 here. So 33 people own a PS5 and they own an Xbox. So out of the 54 Xbox owners, 33 of them also own a PlayStation 5. I hope you've enjoyed this lesson and that you understand the topic of Venn diagrams a lot better. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to share with your friends and your family. See you in the next video.